Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today I'm going to be talking about automatic transmissions, in this case, Fresnel Cascadia's automatic transmissions, or any vehicle that has DT12 Detroit transmissions. There are many trucks with these transmissions. Today I'm going to talk about the learn procedure process of the Detroit transmission, DT12. In this case, it's a process then it's going to determine how much wear or where the transmission is optimal for its performance. We are going to do this process if we're getting problems or we have replaced the clutch or any other major service to the transmission or clutch. In the case of the clutch, we can see then over the time the clutch gets wear, tear over the time and this has to be compensated somewhere and this compensation has to be done with the transmission module, the transmission control module. So when you do a calibration, a learn procedure of the clutch, you are going to compensate this gap that we have here so the transmission and the clutch can understand the position of each, co each component so we get the optimal performance when we are driving. You don't want to do this process if your transmission and clutch are working fine. If you have no problems with the transmission or clutch, don't do this process because this can actually make a bigger problem before than you didn't have. So just be aware of that. So if you don't have any problems, don't do anything to your transmission, DT12 transmission, because you know it's going to be expensive to fix it later. But if you have any problems um, related to transmission or clutch, you can actually do this process. Now I'm going to explain how this process works. This process starts by actually using the DDL software and go into the transmission section and use the learning procedure process and this is going to uh, start by giving you some uh, instructions on how to start it. You can follow the instructions, it's nothing hard, you just follow the instructions and you just go with it. The instructions are going to be related on how to perform this test, this, uh, this uh, adaptation we can call it. This is going to give you different steps here and there on how to do it. Now, when you do this step, you're going to hear the transmission and the clutch are working in different ways. You're going to hear the clutch activating, you're going to hear the transmission going to two gears and uh, many gears and all the components the transmission has that are controlled by computer. This process is just going to calibrate each gap that we have. As I showed previously, on, in the beginning of the video, the wear of the clutch that we have here has to be compensated. So when the calibration, the learning procedure is happening, this calibration is getting determined by the computer when we are doing the learning procedure. So this process is going to take around like two, three, four minutes, depending on the type of uh, vehicle you have. Sometimes they can take less, sometimes more, depending. But uh, it's going to vary by no more than five minutes, no less than one minute. Um, this process requires you to have enough air. The vehicle has to be on a level surface and you have to be sure what you are going to do. So you're going to do it because you replace the clutch. You're going to do it because you replace the transmission. Or you're going to do it because there is a malfunction on the transmission or clutch, let's say for example, the transmission is not going to gears properly, it's kind of hard to go to gears, or the clutch is not getting letting in the gears no, uh, as normal as possible, like if we put the D on it and the first gear doesn't go in, we have to do this calibration process. When you replace the clutch, it's obviously because we have different measurements and the transmission has to learn those new measurements so we can get the best performance out of the new components that we just installed and the same thing for transmissions. Now, what type of problems can we get if we do this calibration, this learning procedure, this adaptation? The problems that we can get are the engine or the transmission not working properly if the learning procedure starts and it doesn't get completed you are going to get a fault. And this fault is going to tell you what is the issue. But if for any reason the test passed completely, you're gonna get then that everything was done correctly. But if the fault happens, you have to investigate why it happens. Probably the vehicle wasn't parked correctly, 
or there is a sensor that isn't working fine, there is a problem internal of the transmission, or there is a problem with the clutch. And this has to be something that you have to check yourself depending on the fault cost you get or the physical information that you know about the transmission, where the issue can be. It's very important then, if you, for any reason, you get a fault, you must repair it before continuing on doing the transmission learning procedure. But if for any reason it just cancel the process, for random reason you can restart it, you can do it. So it will depend, I mean, on when you can restart the process or when you have to repair it. So that is a process, that's something then you have to understand depending on the information you get from the transmission control unit. Now, if you repair the folds for any reason the transmission doesn't allow, let's say the transmission doesn't allow the learning procedure to happen because we have a, a low air pressure. But your air pressure is fine. You check your gauges, your air pressure is fine. So you have to go underneath and check the air pressure sensor or the amount of air that we have on the transmission tank. And if this is correctly, that means then we have a wiring problem, fix that. And there is many ways, there is many things that we have to do. But once this one is fixed, we can restart the process and this has to be done correctly. And once we get it to the right setting, all we have to do is complete it, let it complete, and start the vehicle, and we are ready to go. It's very important that when you finish this process, you turn the ignition off because this process um, cancels any type of um, uh, gear synchronization after it's done. So you have to turn the ignition on and let the, the, the transmission control unit reset itself and then you have to start the vehicle on and then you can do everything. So if for any reason you do this process and you uh, try to put it on gear and it doesn't go on gear, you have to turn it off freeze and then turn it back on and it will work. But overall, this is just a small explanation. There is so many things about this process that you need to learn. Um, but um, it, it, it will depend on uh, the, time of, the type of faults that you are going to get, the type of repairs that you are going to do. And not all the times these faults are going to be easy faults, and not all the time these faults are going to be something that has to be fixed. Sometimes computers just can call different faults. Depending on the circumstances, probably we have an issue somewhere, like the computer didn't actually read a sensor, and all you have to do is turn the mission off and then turn it back on and it will go fine again. So it depends. So um, once you have done this process, you take the vehicle for a road test and if something is wrong, you have to fix it. You know, it's just regular repairs, you know. So the process, as I said before, is very important that you keep in mind that if your transmission or your truck is having no issues at all, don't do it. If you replace the transmission, you replace the clutch, or simply the, the truck is not working well, then you can do it. You can do a calibration. And this is possible that it's going to get better after you have done a calibration. But this is all the information I have. I hope this information is enough, but if it isn't enough, you can just comment below and just comment whatever you think was an um, answer on this video. And we want to try to answer as soon as possible. On the comment section below, you also can comment any type of experiences you, you have, repairs or anything, so other people can learn about these problems or this process that I just explained so we can get more information about this specific topic and learn something new. You can go to Instagram, look for me, Francisco my YouTube, if you have any type of questions or anything you wanna see, I have more content there as well. You want to send support to the channel, just check the description of the video, I have this how to send support to the channel. Like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.